Okay, so now we're back and live. So what do we have? Where are we at? We have our... So let's just focus on our cell body. Big pyramidal neuron, as I said, can be found in the hippocampus, can be found in the prefrontal cortex, can be found throughout the brain. And we have the big player now that we're talking about are the mitochondria. All right, so I'm just going to draw them like this. Okay, and our endoplasmic reticulum, <clears throat> pardon me, sitting out here. So the ER, trying to buffer calcium. Okay, so we've started all this with the NMDA excitotoxicity due to increased concentration of calcium inside the neuron. So now what's happening is the mitochondria are working harder, generating ATP to help store or buffer that calcium. But as they're generating ATP through the oxidative phosphorylation process, which again is not all that critical for the understanding, but just to you know get a general sense of what happens during this process of making or gener producing ATP or energy for the cell to buffer that calcium, what happens when ATP is being cranked out when those mitochondria are working? They have two outcomes. So two negative outcomes for our respects. So we're gonna, I'm gonna draw this, but keep in mind that this is happening inside the cell. Okay, so we're generating reactive oxygen species. That's a big one. And that'll be a big process or step in the neurodegenerative process. So reactive oxygen species. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. So what are reactive oxygen species? So they are superoxides, O2 negative. They are hydrogen peroxide, which is actually a bit of a mild one, but it's nonetheless a reactive oxygen species. In moderate amounts, it actually facilitates enzymatic reactions, but at high amounts, it really cranks them out, or it really disrupts cellular function. And then the hydroxyl radicals, OH. Okay, so this will be, there will be a slide, a PowerPoint slide posted where you can just review these. So those reactive oxygen species are detrimental to the cell membrane. So they impact, so now I'm going to kind of say uh, those conglomerates as they're working, as they're being spit out of the mitochondria, are attacking the cell membrane. And that leads to the first indication of cell death which is lysis. So it's a breakdown of the membrane. So as the membrane breaks down, as it goes through this lysis process, it basically explodes, the cell's contents all ooze out, and the cell dies. Okay, so reactive oxygen species produced by the generation of ATP that then are in response to high levels of this intracellular calcium, right, of that excitotoxicity step, step one that we talked about in the previous little excitotoxicity in the previous video, calcium leading to the generation of ATP to help buffer it through the endoplasmic reticulum, the generation of ATP kicking off reactive oxygen species, Typically, the cell can deal with those. There are antioxidants. Let's see, what color should we make those? I guess purple is a good antioxidant. So that's why as you age, as your neurons become vulnerable, you should be eating more blueberries or taking antioxidants to help you know, quell those levels of reactive oxygen species. But as those reactive oxygen species come up, come you know higher and higher levels, it gets harder and harder for those antioxidants to actually have their effect. So you build up these super, uh, superoxide ions, superoxide ion, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radicals. And as those build up, they attack the bilayer, lipid bilayer membrane, cause lysis. So the cell, if we just draw a little cell down here, the cell will start to show holes. Can you see that? I guess so. And everything inside will ooze out. So you have your endoplasmic reticulum that'll blow out. Everything else, all your cytoplasm, 
goes out, and that cell basically is dead. So that's one step, those reactive oxygen species. We're gonna, reactive oxygen species are a really important step in this whole process. Producing a type of cell death that's slightly different than the cell death produced by the apoptotic signals. So necrosis, or the based on lysis of the membrane, necrosis, the cell swells, becomes leaky or blebbing. So I'm gonna have a picture of this um, posted on the PowerPoint slide. And then there's that actually, this brings up the next step, or a step that we'll talk about as another common pathway in neurodegeneration, and that's the neuroinflammatory response. So that occurs as a result of the lysis or the necrotic cell tissue. But first, before we get into neuroinflammation, there's another process that happens. So as the ATP, as the mitochondria are generating ATP to help buffer that calcium, what will happen is they will set off apoptotic signals. So that's our next little segment in this uh, video collection.